these shows are still waiting to give their regards to Broadway. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 musicals that should have made it to Broadway. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the musical theater shows that we are still waiting to see get their debut on The Great White Way. Number 10. A New Brain This musical is William Finn's autobiographical account of dealing with a seemingly terminal illness and the special healing powers of art. Stories of living, stories of living, stories of dying, stories of dying and ways we can deal with our Gordon worries that he may not live long enough to complete his work, so when he pulls through, he's grateful for the chance to keep doing what he loves. The music showcases Finn's absolute best through a powerful message, but perhaps its mixed reviews kept it off the Broadway stage. However, with his other hit musicals, the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee and Falsettos Paving the Great White Way, maybe Broadway is ready for another Finn hit. I feel so much spring within me. The winds blow, spring has just begun, and something's taken wing within me. Number 9. The Witches of Eastwick. Let the heavens give us all they got. Oh, man, a man in one hand. Make him mine. Based on the novel and movie of the same face, it follows three bored women who get mixed up with the devilish Daryl Van Horn. He brings mayhem to their town and it's up to them to use their newfound powers to get rid of him. The show had a successful run in London, was nominated for four Olivier Awards, and the critics gave mostly favorable reviews. It seems like poor timing is responsible for keeping this show off Broadway, but now just might be the right time to revive this musical starring three badass witches. <laughs> Number 8. Bear a Pop Opera slash Bear the Musical This pop opera, reworked and rebranded as Bear the Musical, is a coming-of-age story. We follow a group of Catholic boarding school teens wrestling with their identities and finding their place in the world. The revised musical focuses on the movement to legalize gay marriage and the bullying LGBTQ pupils still face. This version has been around the world, but not Broadway. But with ever-relevant themes, relatable characters and catchy tunes, it's about time that all changed. I don't need you anyway, cause you don't know anything about me, and you don't know why I play a part. Number 7. The Baker's Wife Every day as you do what you do every day you see the same faces who fill the cafe. This show may not have earned a place on Broadway, but it established a dedicated cult following. Still, I know I've got to go fly away, Meadowlark, fly away on the silver morning. When the baker's wife leaves him, he loses his zest for baking and it's up to the villagers of Provence to save the day and the baked goods. Though it's almost impossible to imagine a Stephen Schwartz musical not making it big, it seems like we're unlikely to see The Baker's Wife, or even a production like Schwartz's eternally popular Children of Eden on Broadway anytime soon. You will know heartache, prayers that don't work, and times of bitter circumstances. Still, we can keep crossing our fingers and holding on to hope for this show to finally hit the Great White Way. Number 6. Martin Guerre That's Martin Guerre Back from the war, not like before On this I swear Claude-Michel Schoenberg and Alain Boubil are known for successfully turning history into musical theatre. But sadly, Martin Guerre failed to match up to Les Mis or Miss Saigon at the box office. Our titular character is forced into an arranged marriage to produce a Catholic heir, 
but plot twist, he's in love with someone else. A classic story. Sir Cameron McIntosh, who backed their other shows, showed less of an interest in this one, but it still went on to win the Olivier for Best New Musical, and any show with that title deserves a spot on Broadway. Number 5. Dogfight Before their success with Dear Evan Hansen, La La Land, and The Greatest Showman, Pasek and Paul brought us Dogfight. We see a group of Marines enjoying one last night of freedom before shipping out to Vietnam, and playing a game where they bet on who can find the ugliest date. You're in store for some kind of time, some kind of time, don't think the show deals with specific socio-cultural issues of 1960s America, and some issues that have surfaced again today. Isn't it funny you believe that it was real? Rose, a victim of this cruel game, represents a changing America, and demonstrates a new wave of female empowerment. And who can't get on board with that? Bum, 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 bum. Number 4. Heather's The Musical A black comedy based on the classic 80s cult film, the Heathers are the OG Mean Girls. And when bad boy JD moves to town, things turn dark at Westerberg High School. While the songs are undeniably catchy, and there's plenty of comedy throughout, the show also deals with bullying, teen suicide, sexual assault, and violence in schools. The show started its UK run off West End, but thanks to a committed cult following, it transferred to the West End. Perhaps it still fated to make its Broadway debut after all. That would be big fun. Number 3. Love Never Dies and in a haze I count the silent days Till I hear you sing once more Cruelly dubbed Paint Never Dries, this sequel to The Phantom of the Opera failed to wow the critics during its London run. But then again, not every Andrew Lloyd Webber show has been an instant hit with Whistle Down the Wind being a prime example of an underrated classic. Perhaps the fans just weren't ready to see Christine and the Phantom reunite under these new circumstances. Weber has said that this was a standalone piece rather than a sequel, but now with a new generation of theatergoers and maybe a couple of tweaks, the Phantom could haunt Broadway again. Embrace your destiny. Number 2. The Hunchback of Notre Dame We're all familiar with the Disney version of Victor Hugo's story about a deformed bell ringer who is hidden away by the cruel Judge Frollo. Once again, this heartwarming story and its beautiful songs didn't get their much-deserved credit. Luckily, Berlin took a chance on it when a production of The Lion King fell through, and it has since become one of their longest-running shows. Eventually, it was translated back into English, so let's hope that one day out there, there will be a spot for this show on Broadway. I'll have spent one day out there. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I turn my back on all they gave me. And I've wasted all these years, but I vow to keep my father's dream alive. This I swear. After a 
I've got this country Memories of those before me Yeah, so always like to get their brain gone And when we get together we do The necronomic home The necronomic Number one, the last five years. Yeah, bet you thought this did make it to Broadway. Here we follow Kathy and Jamie's relationship, but with the exception of one scene, the couple never actually shared the stage. My heart's been stolen, my ego's swollen, I just keep rolling along. Instead, we see the relationship chronologically from Jamie's perspective and in reverse from Kathy's. Despite not reaching the Great White Way, it did hit the silver screen, starring Anna Kendrick and Jeremy Jordan. So many dreams I need to see. There are so many years I need to be. I will with never you. be complete. This show would be perfect for one of the smaller Broadway theaters, as it only needs to fit the two actors and a fairly simple set. The plot is super relatable, and its unique standpoint would make it stand out. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.